everyone, welcome to Animal Watch. And today we are fostering dogs from abroad. I've been rescuing and rehoming dogs since 2011 and have probably rehomed about 350 in total, most of them having come from Romania, but also a small amount from the dog meat trade. One of the main questions people ask me is, how do you foster a dog and how do you go about it? Well, that's what today's episode is about. I'm gonna go through absolutely everything you need to know about fostering one of these gorgeous dogs from abroad. So why foster? Well, there's lots of reasons why people like fostering. You might already have a house full of dogs, but you would like to help other dogs from another country perhaps come over here and find their forever home. Or maybe having a dog for life just isn't for you. Regardless of the case, by fostering, you'll be helping the rescue organisations get those dogs into real homes and adapt to real situations before they find their forever home. Well, I've got Teddy and River here with me, which are my two fosters, which turned up from Romania yesterday on the van. And the reason I've got them with me is because I'm gonna spend the next week with them. I'm gonna assess them. I'm gonna find out their temperament, their character, what they're like around other dogs and also whether they've got any medical issues and other things like that. And then I'll be able to advise what sort of home they can go into. Both Teddy and River were saved by my organisation Angels for the Innocent from a terrible state shelter in Romania where they were fed only three times a week, lived in thick excrement in a disease-ridden environment. A new vet had been hired who wanted to kill all of the dogs. In Romania this is done with injectable poisons, not anaesthesia, and the death is terrible, painful and slow. River was shivering in a pen in minus 20 temperatures and Teddy had been dumped at the shelter with about six other siblings in a cardboard box without his mum. A colleague of mine drove to the shelter and collected the dogs for me, along with two other pups and a mother dog with newborn puppies of her own. Sadly, the mum's puppies had already contracted parvovirus and gradually died over the weeks, leaving just one. The larger one of our other rescue puppies also died of parvovirus a week or so later. This, sadly, is normal and a typical day in Romania for a rescuer. So three of my dogs arrived yesterday. As I said, we've got Teddy here, we've got River over there, and also a third dog called Freya, who is Teddy's sister. Now Freya has gone to full adoption with my camera lady, Agatha, down in Bristol, and I've kept these two back. And this is the moment that they arrived yesterday. I'm here with Ellie Pet. They're always here as usual. I'm gonna get out now and go and meet River for the first time. <laughs> So I've been looking forward to this for so long. Over and Teddy. And Teddy, yes. Oh, here she is. Oh, she's so sweet. Hello. Oh, there she goes. Oh, she was just adorable. She's absolutely gorgeous. Oh. Oh, is he giving you licks? Have you? When you have a foster dog, you can come across many different problems. And when I brought the dogs back to my house yesterday, and I initially brought them in and introduced them to my dogs, River was fear biting all of the other dogs. She was ever so scared, she was biting them in the face. And even Teddy here was doing a little bit of fear biting. Now, an experienced fosterer would recognize that it takes a dog weeks maybe even months to adapt to a new situation. You've got to remember where these dogs have come from. They've come from the streets of Romania and state shelters where they've often been horribly abused, hit, kicked, and actually just been generally feral dogs on the street. So you've got to take all of that into consideration if you want to foster a dog. 
I fed them and then decided to bathe River, who was filthy, greasy, scabby, with clumps of fur falling out. She was suffering from mange, an autoimmune disease, which dogs with poor diet and conditions become susceptible to. By the evening, both Teddy and River had settled so much more and were hardly snapping and were starting to show great affection. Well, today is day two and the dogs have made so much progress in just 24 hours. I got them both to sit within two minutes of asking them to do the command. And if you do it correctly, it's very, very easy to do. I'll show you how to do that later. They're also going to the toilet in the garden. I mean, River is already clean. It's absolutely astounding. This little one's gonna take a little bit more work. I'm getting them to come on command and I've introduced them to the safer dogs out of the pack. Obviously, depending on the dogs that you've got at home, your situation will change so I'll go through that with you also later in the video. One of the things you might like to try with your new foster is seeing if you can get them to sit and this must only be done with positivity so some good treats always help. River, sit. Good girl. And I literally did that yesterday in a couple of minutes. It was very simple to do. She was jumping up on me a lot. I didn't give her the treat. I just waited and waited and waited till she got bored. She sat down, she got the treat. And now she understands to sit. When she sits down, she will get the treat. So River, come sit. Good girl. And it's all positive. Don't try pushing their bums down because these dogs have been mishandled often and they will freak out and they might not like it. So any little bit of kindness is what you'll need to do. Just some simple treats and that's it. Some of the dogs have been caught with those awful catch poles that the dog catchers use. And that's like these horrible nooses that go around their neck and it sort of strangulates them and they lift them up off the ground. So some dogs are going to need a lot more help getting used to the leash. Now, if the leash is too scary for them, you can also have a harness which is much kinder but of course these dogs are feral dogs these dogs will run away until they have bonded with you so the thing you've got to remember when you first get a dog is absolute security the collar has to be tight the harness has to be tight fitting this has to be attached to you you cannot let go of these dogs come on river come on a little walk with me come on good girl sit good girl Right, now I'm going to see if I can sort of lead her a little bit with the lead, which means a little bit more tension, and I wanna see what she does. So she's resisting a little bit here, pulling back. River, come on, come on. So you bring food into the equation, and very quickly she's moving. It's all a really good experience for her. Food is telling her, it's okay, you know, to have this leash on. It's not that bad. What you can buy is these long leashes, so they can go to the toilet and they don't even know that you're actually holding them. These are very good for learning, teaching them to walk. When you first take them out, you don't want to let them off because they're not bonded with you yet. River doesn't even know that she's basically on the leash. Come on, River. Come on. There's a good girl. There's a good girl. So here's an example of a bad fitting harness. Some people put them on in this state and as you can see, so baggy and um, I don't think that she's going to stay in there. So what we'll do is we'll clip the harness to a lead and this will be an example of if I've taken her for a walk in a really bad harness. Oh my God, look, look what happened. Now, if that happens to you down your local park, you've lost your Romanian stray. And another thing that you can do, which I've done with my wolf dogs, is you can get the double bungee leashes. So one of the double leash can affix to the harness, the other one to the collar, and then you clip the lead in the middle. And that way, if she slips out the harness, you've still got her attached to the collar and she won't escape. One of the things you might want to look to get is a puppy training pen. Now they're not cruel if you use them correctly. They become the dog's basket, it becomes their safe place. If they want to get away from your other dogs or if they want to go and just hide away and have a little bit of a sleep, 
you've got their little pen here. A lot of the time dogs will not go to the toilet in their own pen. They don't want to poo where they sleep. So by having him go to sleep in here and shutting the door, he won't go to the toilet. And then the moment you let him out in the morning, you can take him straight into the garden and hopefully he will start to learn that that's where he goes for a wee. Now with River, she has been clean immediately and you'll find that a lot with adult feral dogs from Romania because they're used to going to the toilet outside. Now from my experience from Romanian dogs is um, they've eaten really, really badly in Romania. And that has a benefit for you because they're actually not that very fussy. They're quite happy for you to give them pretty much any type of food. Um, I prefer with puppies to give them something soft. And so with um, little Teddy here, I've just got some, you know, run of the mill dog food that you'd get from the supermarket and I'm just gonna give it to him. I'm not gonna give him anything rich and I'm not gonna give him raw food because I really don't think it's going to benefit these dogs that have been living on the street. So we're just gonna go from very, very plain supermarket soft food. Now what you want to do is to feed him separately from your other dogs because of course they're not gonna particularly like the fact that maybe you've got a puppy in the house, you don't want him to get bitten. And also you wanna see how he gets on, <laughs> not like that obviously, how he gets on with the food and you can monitor everything with him. So I'm just gonna give him a little bit now. One of the more scary things about having a foster dog, especially when they're tiny, like this little one, is introducing the dogs that you've already got at home. Now, I've got five very large dogs, and I've got some of my dogs I would not trust with this little one. So if you're going to foster a dog, you have to be responsible. You have to think about perhaps some segregation between dogs that you don't entirely trust. And then you have to work out which of the dogs that you think would be able to mix very well. So this little puppy here, I've noticed he's a little bit fearful of dogs. He can growl a little bit. And for that reason, I will not be introducing him to my female wolf dog who doesn't like dogs biting. Now, if he was to bite her, she'd kill him. So she's not going to meet him at all. Um, for the first meeting, I would bring out my matriarch dog called Kyoshi. Now, Kyoshi's lovely. Everyone loves her. She gets on with every single dog. She's got incredible body language. She's just like a mummy dog. And um, she'll be very, very kind to this puppy. If he's naughty, she's not going to hurt him or anything. When River turned up yesterday, she was a little bit grouchy and um, snapping at the dog. She's actually got a lot better today, but there has been the occasional snap and bite. Mr. Blue here, he's like a bottom of the pack wolf dog, so I'm very happy to have him interacting. Her little tiny growl there, I don't know if you picked that up, but she's still not that particularly comfortable with these dogs. Sometimes a really good place to introduce them is a very, very small neutral area. So maybe a friend's back garden. That way both dogs don't have territory and you can, you can monitor them. You can perhaps keep her on a long leash and you, perhaps you can keep the other dog on a leash too and then allow them to smell each other, get used to each other and just, it's almost like becoming part of the pack and then they're much better than when you bring them back in the house. I did actually put her straight into the house, but I've only put her with the dogs I absolute trust. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When your foster dog comes to you, you will be given this passport. This is a Romanian dog passport, and it's very, very important that you keep this really safe because you will possibly be checked up by the authorities to make sure that they've had all the vaccinations and also they've been chipped and worms and what have you. So if you ever get called up by DEFRA, you need to make sure that you've got this on hand. Now, when it comes over to you, it will have all the vaccinations listed inside and it will also have the pet's microchip number. Now, the thing that's really important to realize is this is not a British chip. This is gonna be an international chip. It is not recognized. It is not registered on the system in England. So what you have to do is you have to call up one of the British companies now, for instance, Petlog, that's a company that I use a lot. And what you'll do is you will read out the microchip that is in the passport after first checking with your vet that they do match. So if the dog escapes, it's definitely that dog's chip. And what you'll do is you'll call them up and then just ask them down the phone if you could register.
Hello, yes, hi. I'd like to register a dog that I'm fostering from Romania. It's got a Romanian chip and it's not registered on the system. Can you please give me a quote on how much it's going to cost? Okay, so premium service or a basic service, but that's a one-off payment for life, right? Okay, and then if the dog gets lost, it will come back to my address. All right, brilliant, thank you. I'll read out the chip for you, thank you. Okay, off to get his collar. Okay, so we're going to pick little Teddy here, a little collar, and then maybe get his, his name tag done for him as well. Um, what have we got here? They're quite sweet. One of the things when you have a foster from Romania or any dog, um, you really need to get a tag. And the reason being is these dogs, they don't know you, they don't trust you. They could get out of your garden, they could run away, and you really need people to know where to return the dog to. So you need to get your name on there, you need to get your telephone number on there, and you need to get your address. Now this, you might be a temporary home, but this is where the dog is gonna be sent back to if it gets lost. So little Teddy here and River are going to get tags to me until they get their forever home. He's got his collar and he's got his harness and a little bag of treats and so he's all set. Oh and yes, his engraved tag which is really important. And the most important thing of all is of course to enjoy your foster and just have fun with them. Since we filmed this episode, River has been adopted by my dear friend Carla Fraser, who is a fellow Angels for the Innocent ambassador and is living a glorious life in Kent. Teddy, now renamed Kai, has been adopted by wildlife presenter Steve Backshall and Olympic world champion rower Helen Glover and is living the dream on the banks of the River Thames in Berkshire. I'm Helen, this is Steve and this is our rescue pup Kai and he's extra special because he's come over from Romania. They found him in a kill shelter when he was just a tiny puppy and if he wasn't rescued and brought over to this country he wouldn't actually be alive today. He is now an incredible little pup with bags of personality. He's training up really really quickly and is as you can see very very affectionate. So if you're thinking about getting a dog, if you're looking into it, please consider rescuing from abroad. With the help of Angels for the Innocent, we've now got this beautiful puppy in our lives and it's such a great opportunity to help a little life as well. If you are interested in becoming a fosterer, you can work with a UK or international charity. You will need to contact them directly and have a home check so they can assess your lifestyle and the type of dog that would work with you. Please remember that fostering is just as time consuming as owning a dog. And if you work long hours or travel frequently, I would not recommend that you do this. Handing back a dog after a week or so is not gonna help with the dog's progress. Well, if you're interested in fostering, then please drop me a line by putting a comment underneath this video below. And I do try to read and reply to as many of the comments as possible. So if you've got any questions, and also if you are living in the UK and you fancy being a fosterer or even adopt a dog through Angels for the Innocent organization, then you can drop me a message through my page, which is www angelsfortheinnocent.org and if you enjoyed this video then please remember to give me a big thumbs up and subscribe by hitting that little button in the corner down below and if you hit the alarm bell too you'll be notified of when each episode comes out every week so it's bye from me it's bye from them she's gone already